Welcome everyone, Mark here with Mark's Travel Time. Just a couple of quick things that came across the internet today. One was regarding Lyft, and Lyft is trying to fight to become more prominent in the food delivery business. And it's been recently reported that they are kind of putting out the word that they're a cheaper delivery option and they may even offer a no charge to restaurants in order to secure their delivery. Uh, in one article that I read, it said that Lyft, I don't know if it was an accusation or if they were just trying to clarify or make their point, but they said that often restaurants have to pay 20 to 30% of, uh, I, I would assume they're talking about food costs, to Uber in order to get Uber Eats to deliver. And they're saying that they can do this for far less, in some cases, even free. Well, of course, Uber has also said they're not going to have delivery fees for certain restaurants, in particular those that are minority owned and are independent, not part of a chain. So this is interesting. Um, we're, we're seeing the food delivery fights starting to go on. I think they're all seeing that delivery is a profitable venture for them. And they all want to uh, stay in the game. Of course, I'm always wondering whenever COVID ends, I have to believe it's going to end at some point, right? Whenever that ends, is delivery going to be the big dog that it is right now? And I think that's what we have to keep our eye on. In the meantime, what does it mean for drivers? I don't know. I hope that it means delivery gets bigger and bigger and bigger because that's more and more work for drivers. We're just, admittedly, we're pawns that are sitting here watching all this play out and just turning on the app and going where they want us to go. But I say work is work. And I've been doing delivery and I'm gonna to continue to do a delivery. So we'll see what happens and how this all unfolds. I don't do other delivery options. For example, I don't do uh, Lyft. I only do Uber Eats. I don't do Lyft, I don't do Amazon. So I can't really comment on what that's going to do. But it'll be interesting to see if this has any effect on Lyft's positioning in the food delivery market. Now, the next thing that I noticed out there, and this has been almost on a daily basis for the past week, well, probably longer than that, almost since Prop 22 passed out in California, that Uber has been saying they want to get similar situations in the entire country, all the states. And I think what they're trying to hit next is Massachusetts because Massachusetts Attorney General has already suggested, hey, you know, we already have kind of an ABC uh, structure in place and we don't think that Uber, Lyft, whoever else, DoorDash, that they are adhering to that. So they already see rumblings going on in Massachusetts. So what they want to do is try to have Prop 22 measures move, uh, un unfold and be put into place prior to being challenged by any particular state. That's what I think is happening right now. They're trying to be proactive. And I think that California is going to be a good testing ground. We'll see what happens. I still think it's too soon to know whether or not this is going to be good for drivers. My base feeling is it's better than uh, AB5. I was almost gonna say it's better than AB5, but it's not. AB5 had its downfall, Prop 22 had its downfall, and I think you're choosing the worst of the two evils, and I'm not sure I know what the worst is. I certainly don't wanna be an employee, but now that you've accepted their conditions, it's gonna be really, really hard to get out of it, especially when they that you need a seven-eighths majority to rescind Prop 22. So it's going to be really interesting. I see some drivers, but maybe they're only the ones I'm hearing from are saying, yeah, we kind of like it. Uh, we are finding that the five time, you know, where you can set your own rate, people are still buying in. They're still taking rides at five times. We're talking about LA for the most part. People are used to paying outrageous amounts of money for things in Los Angeles. In the Midwest, 
I don't know if that will fly, but time will tell. And I think that's interesting that that's the attack they're taking. And one last thing, and this has to do with Uber. As you know, Uber has been laying off people pretty frequently, and they've been doing it through Zoom calls. So what happened in Amsterdam is they laid off 200 people, but 11 people decided, no, we don't want to do this. We don't want to sign off on this. They have some weird... Uh, structure in place. And I say it's weird just because it's different. It's something I've never heard of. And there's something called the UWW. It has to do with employment and insurance and and different things in Amsterdam. And um, they said they will not allow Uber to lay off or fire these 11 people. I think that's weird that a government can tell a business that they can't fire or lay off people. Sorry about that. I had a ping come through, but I think I was just about wrapped up saying everything I was going to say. A lot of small stuff that could have major impact. Uh, Government is telling Uber they can't fire their employees. Uber is saying that they are going to try to get a jump on something similar to Prop 22. And Lyft saying it wants to get a jump on Uber and charge less, in some cases far less, even nothing, to restaurants for food delivery. That's a lot of stuff going on in the rideshare world. Oh, and by the way, Airbnb is uh, filing an IPO. So they're going to go public. All right. Thanks, everybody. As always, I encourage you to like and share the videos. Leave your comments down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking my face in the corner. And don't forget to ring that bell icon. That way you'll know when I post new videos. I'm Mark, and this is Mark's Travel Time.